Hey, True Believers, Chris Mack coming at you with an awesome figure review. Today we are going over the McFarlane DC Multiverse Last Night on Earth Batman. This is part of the Collect to Build Bane series, and I gotta say, I was really on the fence about this figure, but now that I picked him up, yeah, I'm definitely happy with it. Speaking of which, if you want to pick him up, please First and foremost, support your local comic shop. See if they have it in stock. If not, you it is available on Big Bad Toy Store and DorksideToys.com. So I saw that, made sure. So at the time of this recording, pick these bad boys up. So you see Batman here. See the McFarlane uh, logo there. Still love that DC Multiverse logo there. You see Bane, Batman. Come around to the side. Window, logo, Come around to the back. I like that they show you how to build the figure there so that you're not just kind of like, um, maybe. This is the product shot from uh, Last Night on Earth number one. This is a variant. The main cover is absolutely delicious. You see the figures from the wave that you need, so I'll make sure to get a close-up, and you can look at it at your convenience. Come around to the side. Again, I love that they put Batman Last Night on Earth. Well, I'll talk a little bit about the comics here in a minute, but if you guys have not read this, Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this has helped so much when I'm out and about like at Walmart or Target and you don't want to dig through all the figures. I'm glad that they do this so you can just look on the side and see which one's which without having to take them all off the peg. Come around to the front, Batman, bottom, nothing. Top, love that they put Last Night on Earth there, so yeah, good stuff. I'm excited for this, so let's crack it open and get a closer look at old Batsies. And here's Bats out of his packaging. Against a kind of Asylum-esque background, I gotta give a shout out to my buddy Christopher for hooking me up with these backdrops. It's helped my photography so much. Thanks, man. But as you can see, this Batman looks so awesome. I know that we have this background in the way, but that's okay. I just wanted to throw him up against a really neat, you know, background that looks sort of like a Last Night on Earth thing. But I love how the straps look like a cape. We'll get into that in a moment. But I just want to put them on the stand and just show how cool this Batman in a straight jacket can look. I'm glad I picked him up. As I said, I, I was not a big fan of this when I first saw the product reviews, but you know, walked up, saw him at Target, and I was like, yeah, I definitely need this figure. Now, there's a lot to like about this figure. Um, on mine particularly, there's a few things that drive me nuts. I don't know if this is going to be the case for everybody, but let's go ahead and take him off the stand and let's go ahead and get into what I'm talking about. So the first appearance of Batman in this suit is from Scott Snyder's Batman Last Night on Earth. The print date on that was July 2019. And kind of a, just a quick run through is Bruce wakes up in Arkham Asylum and is told by Dr. Redmond Hud that he's been there for 20 years and he does not believe this until Alfred walks into the room and shows him his makeshift bat suit which is made out of a straight jacket as we see here. Now we've done a review on this book so I'll make sure to leave a little thingamajigger up here so you can click it at your convenience. So you, you, you get this idea that is, is he really in an insane asylum or, or what and you find out in the book so i don't want to spoil it i want you guys to go out and read this dark night last night on earth is definitely one of those you want to read and the story itself reminds me of two things a it reminds me of what the book that we went over from uh, legends of the dark night which was issue 39 and uh oh man that that book really starts to mess with your psychosis. So definitely make sure to check out that book too. We've done, as I said, a review on it. So that is one that you want to read. And then also, if you guys have seen that meme on social media where it says, what if Bruce Wayne's actually in Arkham Asylum and Alfred dresses up as his rogue gallery to make him, you know, to help sate Bruce. And that's kind of a short paraphrase, but it's kind of the idea. And I think Scott Snyder kind of took that joke and ran with it and made it a very dark, noirish tell. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about the accessories that this really cool figure comes with. So first and foremost, he comes with the stand, you know, standard, which I'm not complaining because these really help, especially when you want to put them on a shelf and you're worried about them falling or, you know, you're doing photography and you're having a hard time doing a pose. 
there's a review, or not a reviewer, a toy photographer that I watch called Sir Dork. And he, one of his things, because I like that he does tutorials, and he always says, don't be limited by the range of motion that your figure can do. You know, he always says wires, stands, anything you can do to get them into a very dynamic pose for your picture. So these are always a very welcome sight. <laughs> the uh, other things that he does come with, he comes with the trading card, which I'll make sure to throw the front of it up here. And as I said, this is the variant of The Last Night on Earth, number one. The uh, official cover that we just saw a moment ago is my favorite just because that nice uh, silhouette look just really gives it this foreboding and whatnot. Because you're wondering what's happening, you know, what's going to happen when he comes out of the shadows. Just love that cover. Now you flip it around to the back and you get a read-up of The Last Night on Earth. So I really appreciate that, you know, if you've never heard of it, this kind of at least gives you a quick in and out of what the story is about and hopefully entices you to read it because it's definitely one you want in your collection because elsewhere old stories are always awesome. The uh, other things that he does come with, he comes with a billy club, which kind of looks, you know, standard, kind of generic, but I do like that when you look at it, it is wood and there's chips on it, which you can kind of see in the light here that it's been used as people have been bashed in with this thing. So even though it's not brown, I like that they made sure it looks like wood and all the little chips. And then I like that the handle looks like a, a regular police baton. So that's that's a cool addition. And it does fit into his belt here. So, you know, you don't want to ram it in there. I'd suggest starting from below and just gently twisting it in as far as you want. So you get that cool addition. I'm always thankful when you have weapon storage because yeah, I hate when you get all these accessories and you have nowhere to put them. That, that just chaps my high beyond belief. The last thing he comes with is the Joker in this canister. Now, Batman finds Joker's head alive in this thing in the comics. And there's a scene where uh, Joker, he's gone crazier than we know him to be. And he goes, we're going to do the adventures of Batman and Noggin. And there's just, some of the lines get a little repetitious and tiring but yeah it, it's interesting how much this head actually plays a pivotal role in last night on earth and the head's very well sculpted it was hard to see with the fog but in the book this orange that you see around the container is supposed to be fluid keeping his head alive more than likely embalming fluid and then on the back i like how it's just one solid orange piece i don't know if that's dry brushing or uh, airbrushing, but it's nice and solid. Looks really nice. I kind of wish that they would put metal, uh, silver on the divots here. And I'm almost 100% sure you cannot take this head out. If you can, let me know down in the comments if you've tried, which I'm not going to because, you know, this looks good the way it is. I like the little designs on the side. I like the leather strap. Looks really nice. So I'm a big fan of this piece. If this had not come with him, <coughs> this would have left a huge void in the figure because this is like the signature of these two characters through the whole comic so you know good on McFarlane for making sure to bring this into the figure I'm very thankful for that now with that said that's everything that Batman comes with let's talk about the figure himself so this is the suit that he dons at the beginning of the comic series and I like how instead of it saying Arkham it's W so it looks like Wayne but it also looks like a bat that's a really neat addition and then the helmet i like how it's very much a makeshift design like he just took leather and straps from the asylum and put it together it almost looks like a a, a fighter pilot helmet as you can see the straps here that he used for the horns and you can tell that it's seen some action it has all those little rivets in there i like that attention to detail the white on the eyes look great so does the flesh tone and the lips does not look off-putting at all I like how the straps come around and button around the neck. That's really cool. Like the, uh, what you call it? Mm. The, I've not had enough coffee, folks. The Insane Asylum straps, thank you, straps that go around the straight jacket. And what's really cool is when you fill this figure, and you can kind of see, you see how it has sort of that vinyl look? Let's see if you can hear this. So you actually kind of get that fill of very uncomfortable vinyl. I like the little holes in the rips, so it looks like, you know, he's had the, the orderlies had to fight 
to keep him in this thing so it's not just like fresh off the rack. I like that idea, especially how, again, how I sort of mentioned at the beginning when he was on the stand, how they made the straps that are supposed to wrap around him, which I think these are accurate on a straight jacket. I don't know. I've never been committed, so I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, they start in the back, and then these are supposed to wrap around the front like so. These are soft leather, so you can kind of play with them, you know, warm them up a little bit, and kind of get a neat cape look going on. But, yeah, I just, I like that idea of, functionality of using something that's there and then making it something else so again we kind of get that makeshift cape i just think that's a really nice design and as you just keep going you start seeing again all the little attentions to details so you see the rips in the arms and then the cuffs that are supposed to hold you down for like electric shock therapy etc so forth i like that they actually put his bat uh, i never know what these things are called on him but the pointy things on the end of his uh, cape his cape his gloves I love that. I like this utility belt. Just really works. Again, how they utilized the straps of the straight jacket. Just a really great idea. And I like that they made sure that everything's rippled. The pants, what I like here. I'm wondering, you know, it was on the other figure because I looked at a couple of these because I'm always very adamant about paint apps on the face. But as you can see, there's like a little bit of like a dark washing on the legs so i like that this makes it nice and worn and torn in the boots i think if you look at these boots i think these are the boots as you can see the laces i think these are from the batman who laughs so that's cool it, it, it adds an extra layer so you know, re, you know they have to use re, reuse pieces to kind of help save on budget but i like those boots again that dark washing just overall very well done paint apps i think this was a very Nicely executed figure in terms of looks, paint app, and sculpting. So definitely a 10 out of 10. I think, I don't, I'm just really excited about it. You'd think this is such a basic looking figure because it's all kind of that tan, but just the utilization of the W, just like in the comics, I don't know. I think it just looks really great. For articulation, he's actually very bendy, believe it or not. There's one thing that chats my butt, and then let me know if you guys own this figure. I was watching the review spots uh, video on his Batman, and he was talking about how his arm joints are loose. Mine are okay for the most part, but on mine, the leg joints are loose. So I was just kind of like, no. So let me know what you guys think, because I'm wondering if this was just a design flaw on this figure in general. Do you have loose arms? Do you have loose legs? Let me know down below. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump into his articulation. He can look down that much. And then because of this collar, again, always warm up your figures before you start playing with them. You know, whether it be a hairbrush, a hairbrush, yes, a hairbrush, a hairdryer or warm water. Because if you try to take them straight out of the box and mess with them, they're, you're going to have more of a chance of breaking it. His head does look back, even with that back of that thing, he can look up that about that much which is okay i'm sure if i heated him up some more i could probably manipulate that but for the time being that's all right head can twist even with that collar so i'm okay with that and he has a little bit of attitude in the head so you can get a nice dynamic range for pose posing and or photography arms do go up that much that much and he does have a little bit of a inside butterfly joint so you can move the arms back and forth which is welcomed double jointed elbows does have the upper thigh swivel, so always thankful for that and a welcome addition. Hand spin 360, and again, you always have to be creative because of the ball joints on these figures, which you can kind of see there. I don't like them that much, but the longer I mess with McFarlane's figures, I'm starting to figure out how to manipulate them more, so it doesn't bother me as much as in the beginning. So that's okay. I'm thankful for the double jointed elbows, the butterfly joint there. Good stuff. You can twist his torso that much, that much. I'm sure you can go 360, but I'm not going to. Ab can go down that much, that far back, and you do get a little bit of extra uh, clearance there. So get a relatively decent amount of coverage on there. Now, even though this is here, like on the Robins, this can hinder. But again, you warm him up, and you can kind of sneak his legs up under so you can kick out that much 
So that's a better range than we've seen on a lot of the Batman figures. So I was like, yes. His legs, double jointed, can't you know go flesh back here all the way to the butt, but that's all right. Feet can go down that much, can go up that much. Ankle pivot, and this is what I mean by see how loose that is, so be careful. And then he does have the toe pivot. The only thing missing, and this is something I'm hoping that McFarlane will eventually learn, is he does not have a boot cut or an upper thigh cut. Those are very pivotal, especially when you're doing photography, because you want to make this figure look as dynamic as possible and without it. But I will give it a pass, because even with the spinning, he is a little... You can kind of hula hoop him that way, too. So... For the articulation, for once, I'm, I, I'm glad to say that it does not go completely off the rails. So, 8 out of 10 on this articulation, for sure. Size comparison-wise, here's our Batman. Next to the Merciless, uh, I guess you call it Build-A-Figure Wave or Collect to Connect. I, I always forget the terminology, but we know what it means. And you can see he is one giant mammoth figure. Here's the... DC Collectibles Designer Series, I believe Greg Capullo, Mr. Freeze, which I absolutely love this figure. I'm glad that I was able to get a hold of it. Though, for this one, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But Bruce stands somewhere about 7 inches tall, so for standing to reason, this would probably be about 8 inches tall, I believe. Something like that, you know, if I'm wrong, feel free to make fun of me down in the comments. Mr. Freeze, minus his hood, which you can kind of see there, they're about the same height, so... Nonetheless, when you put these on a shelf, they're going to scale very well because he is supposed to be a big behemoth. These two are more human-esque because when Batman dons this armor, which we will go over the comic book eventually, and I do have the review for this figure lined up soon, <laughs> um, everything is scaled the way it's supposed to be. And just for funsies, we'll bring in an additional figure to just kind of talk about this. This is the um, DC Designers series Greg Capullo as well. Harvey Two-Face, and I really like this figure too. I'm glad that they sort of kept the animated series of just kind of having the inverse colors to kind of help show the duality of his nature. But I think he's probably about six and a half, and, you know, Harvey's a little bit smaller. You know, Mr. Freeze always looks large and in charge when you, put, when you see him in the books. And in the original animated cartoon, he was smaller, but in the books, he's always big and bulky. So I can forgive that. All these figures are going to look great when you display them and when you're doing photography i believe the scaling is going to look fine and if you know need be you can always play with the um depth of fill yeah we're gonna go with depth of fill i haven't had enough coffee but you're gonna get some good shots out of all these characters but i want to hear what you think so i'm going to throw it to you guys what do you think of all these characters so far that we've gotten from the the collectible series which really breaks my heart that it's gone but mcfarlane i believe is really starting to get a grasp on these figures. They've gone leaps and bounds since that first wave with the Batman Who Laughs and Batgirl and Nightwing and uh, all those other figures that were kind of peg warmers. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really liking where this is going. I'm glad that I've stuck with it. So again, let me know what y'all think down in the comments below. Overall, this figure is awesome. I'm a little disappointed that my version has a little bit of loose joints, so I'm gonna have to play with that. But the posability for once, even with the ball joints, do not get on my nerves. He is super bendable, which allows you to get some really cool walking posing going on. So like for this particular setup that I did, I had a blast with it, but the downfall is, is because his jo joints are kind of loose. It's sort of like, bleh. so he kind of looks like he's doing, um, I can't remember that old 70s thing. But anyway... This Batman is one you're going to want in your collection, especially if you are a fan of The Last Night on Earth like I was. That was an absolutely excellent read. So if you have enjoyed this figure, guys, as I said, there's, there's no real complaints that I can say. I mean, yeah, there's some things that they can add, but overall, no complaints. So if you've enjoyed it, please, first and foremost, support your local comic shop. If not, check out the places we mentioned at the beginning of the review. Speaking of, if you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little bat bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys can come to the channel. And we love talking with y'all and hearing your feedback down in the comments below or on our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, 
Hope you enjoy the photo slideshow coming up, and I hope y'all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting. True boy. Thank you.